Warning: The SCP Foundation audio archive is classified. Access by unauthorized personnel is strictly prohibited. Perpetrators will be tracked, located, and detained. Normalcy. Note from O5 Council. In case you're wondering why this object is here where it doesn't belong, it's important to remember two things. First, the SCP-001 slot is specifically reserved for use by the O5 Council, as they deem necessary. Second, consensus reality is simply consensus of a council. Item number, SCP-001. Object class, non-anomalous. Special containment procedures. SCP-001 is kept on a dedicated server or library, located in place of the O5 Council's choosing. The normal prohibition of O5 members from contacting SCP-designated objects does not apply in the case of SCP-001, as it is not anomalous. Any additions, deletions, or updates to SCP-001 requires the consensus decision of the O5 Council. Access to SCP-001 is limited to the O5 Council. Access by other Foundation members or non-Foundation entities constitutes a containment breach that may result in a broken masquerade scenario. General amnestic release is authorized to be used in the case of a containment breach, up to and including Global Class A amnestization, as required. Description SCP-001 is a document describing consensus reality. Anomalous activity is therefore defined as any activity that occurs outside the parameters of a document. The document may describe certain characteristics of reality as inherently anomalous, as decided upon by the O5 Council. General practice has included universal laws of gravitation, physical forces, and basic chemistry, biology, sociology, and philosophy. Presently, discoveries and technological development are not considered anomalous, as long as they are built on a framework of knowledge previously designated consensus reality using the scientific method. All new claims of discovery are to be monitored for developments outside the parameters of SCP-001, which can be reproducible. Claims of discovery that cannot be reproduced and appear to affect the perception of only the individual reporting the claim are not considered anomalous, and can be allowed into the general public. In most cases, these claims may result in the public calling them hallucinations, crackpot theories, or conspiracies, and discounted. This is to be encouraged because it allows for plausible deniability when an anomaly is more widely witnessed in public. All activities and objects outside the parameters of SCP-001 are to be tracked, secured, contained, removed from public knowledge, and protected by the SCP Foundation. Studies from such objects can be used in proposals for further updates to SCP-001. The following excerpts have been cleared by the O5 Council as examples of update proposals to SCP-001. In all cases, the speaker is not identified, nor are the logs complete. Proposal Date November 1st, 1932 Update Proposal Declaration of Modern Witchcraft Traditions Arising in the United Kingdom as Anomalous Dialogue Why are we even covering this? There are traditional beliefs and cultures throughout history that we do not consider anomalous. We must not use our position to threaten the right of humanity to believe. Except this does not extend from traditional practices. This new witchcraft is a modern invention, developed through a scholarly rereading of practices as an alternative to Christianity. It is not a continuation, and practitioners are attempting spell casting. Soon you'll say Aleister Crowley has something to do with it. The document is clear. Theurgy is anomalous, religion and spirituality are not. Show me proof that they are casting spells that cannot be explained under rigorous testing, and I will personally see to containing those spells myself. Until then, no. Just as Thelma is allowed, so shall this witchcraft. For God's sake, we'll allow Satanism as long as they aren't channeling demonic energies. Agreed. 
Furthermore, we will need all the faith we can to muster against theurgic traditions. We never know when a new faith will assist us in our cause. Conclusion. No update. Proposal date. July 16, 1945. Update proposal. Reevaluation of physics on the subject of nuclear fission. Dialogue. Thank you for responding to my emergency call. Trinity has happened. I can barely comprehend what I saw. It was like the sun rising from the desert sand, a dawn of destruction and fire that lasted for miles around. I cannot believe that such an explosion could ever be seen as possible. Tales and prior evidence of the summoning of gods have had less impact. I tremble with fear about the possibility of people wielding this kind of power, the ability to level a city with a flick of a switch. Weren't the Germans and Russians also developing this technology? We are at war, and this sort of escalation happens. May I remind my esteemed colleagues that we are not at war? The United States, Japan, they are at war. We are not nations. No. The question stands. Is it anomalous? Do the physical effects follow from the mathematical concepts? They do follow. Scientific testing was completed each and every step of the way to reach this point. I do not believe this is anomalous, no matter how frightening the repercussions are. What? You're just going to let people hold onto the keys to their own destruction? We have fought tooth and nail to keep such capabilities out of the reach of man, and now you're saying we should abandon our purpose? We do not prevent destruction. We sequester the anomalous. As long as we agree that the test was arrived at thorough diligent scientific process available to any available to anyone, listen to yourself. Can you imagine a future where any two bit dictator chooses to unleash the fire of a thousand suns wherever he wishes? Maybe the problem isn't with the equations. Maybe the whole of nuclear physics is anomalous itself. Enrico Fermi has already received a Nobel Prize for his work on transuranic elements and radioactivity. We can't just secure nuclear physics from the world. Radioactivity is everywhere, and we end up causing more contradictions when we try to send ourselves back to the Dark Ages. Try explaining chemistry without referring to covalent bonds. Try explaining biology. Nuclear physics is here to stay, and we had better get used to the consequences of this, no matter how terrifying this will be for the planet and for humanity. May God have mercy on our souls. Conclusion Recent developments in the studies and applications of nuclear fission and the results of their unleashing are added to SCP-001. Proposal Date April 2nd, 2014 Update Proposal Classification of Worm That Walks Phenomenon Dialogue For those unfamiliar with the topic, the worm that walks is a trope in which a character is actually a writhing hive mind of worms, generally held together as a single mass. We are not here to discuss this trope. Instead, we are here to discuss the recent conspiracy that has arisen from it. The conspiracy is the idea that certain individuals are actually worms that walk, and not humans. Does this conspiracy have any merit? No. Individual conspiracy believers are divided themselves on who is a worm that walks and who isn't, and all evidence indicates that there aren't actual worms that walk in the general populace. It pretty clearly falls under reproducible conspiracy theories. I believe there's nothing we need to do or change in SCP-001. It may not be as irreproducible as we think. Why do you say that? On November 12th, 2013, a believer in the conspiracy from Decatur, Alabama, killed his neighbor under the belief that the neighbor was a worm that walks. The killer then took a video of his deceased neighbor and uploaded it to YouTube, claiming it was proof of the conspiracy, and that the corpse was dissolving into individual worms before his very eyes. He said that he was going to take a sample. The video was very quickly blocked and removed, and everyone who has viewed the video agrees that the subject is unmoving and does not dissolve into worms. The killer then turned himself into the police while clutching a jar of Tubifex worms and the neighbor sent to the Morgan County morgue. Autopsy confirmed that the deceased was missing a thumb post-mortem and killed by gunshot to the chest, which, if he were a worm that walks, would be survivable. So, is this the actions of an insane man? 
no actual conspiracy. The one item of interest was that after the autopsy, the assistant coroner oversaw the return of the body to the next of kin. The assistant coroner was also a conspiracy believer, and despite not having any prior contact to the parties involved, screamed in disgust upon entering the examination room, grabbing a mop and complaining about all the worms everywhere. No one else noticed any signs of worm infestation. Are we positive he didn't come across the video or anything? We weren't sure. So, to test this, we acquired the corpse and showed it to a number of D-class. They agreed that it was a human corpse. We then introduced them to the worm that walks conspiracy. And upon viewing the corpse again, 20% of them agreed that it was actually a mass of worms. That sounds like a memetic hazard then. Has the conspiracy literature been scanned by the CH department? CH found it negative for memetic effects, but did find a chart in one pamphlet that would function like a memetic trigger, unlocking a memory. However, of course, it would only work if the affected had that memory. And that memory would be, having recently seen a living worm that walks. Conclusion Language regarding memestic triggers strengthened to include recent perception. Although there remains no evidence that there is any truth to the worm that walks conspiracy, the repercussions of the existing of a memestic trigger that works is something to think about. After all, you have heard about that thing. Further reporting, O5 access only. Access granted. Attempt to access SCP-001 detected. Identity challenge initiated. Deploying memetic kill agent. Does the black moon howl? Hello, I've been expecting you. Since you've managed to get past our challenge, you might be a star precognitive hacker from the CI, or Dr. Argon's pet, or some extra narrative entity come to browse our database for your morbid entertainment. Yes, we know you're there, listener. This is for you too. No matter who you are, the fact that you're here reading this means one thing. You are anomalous. I'm sure you won't find SCP-001 here. It's stored in a far more unreachable location than this. I'm sure you were hoping you could get in, edit it in a couple places here and there, and voila! You're no longer anomalous. You're free to go. The Foundation will harass you no longer. Of course, it can't be that easy. But I am going to help you. You deserve this much. I'm going to tell you why. Why the Foundation targets you. Why we deem you something to contain, to persecute. After all, there are far worse evils in the world. We keep our record of nuclear weapons above as an example. There are numerous genocides throughout history. The death toll from just the flu alone is far greater than the potential damage for thousands of the people and objects we contain. And yet we dedicate ourselves to branding you anomalous. Something not normal. Something inherently wrong. Something that cannot be allowed its peace. Why? I'm not going to patronize you and say there's nothing I can do. I am only one voice in the council, and I can't change things on my own. That's true, but the decisions I make, and the way I let myself view your circumstance are a direct cause of people seeing fit to throw you into a box. Even if I can't change the document, I could remain one more advocate for your normalcy. After all, humanity has believed in ghosts and spirits for thousands of years. We all believe in the monster under our beds when we're children. These phenomena are very real, and very much a part of the way the world works. Why can't we just declare them normal? Why won't I free you from your torment? It's because we aren't only here to secure, contain, and protect the world. We're here to secure, contain, and protect you. The defining feature of the anomalous is that it cannot be explained through simple scientific testing. This makes you and your nature different, unique, even. And that scarcity makes it valuable. But that doesn't mean that your value is something everyone can appreciate. Sometimes it can only be appreciated by those who would use it against you. That scarcity is also the tool by which a monster can exploit you. Others aren't familiar with your anomaly and won't respond to descriptions of it as real. 
This gives opportunity to nefarious individuals to exploit that lack of knowledge and use you as an eldritch pawn to your pleasure. They can isolate you, consume you, make your anomaly their lever to destroy, slake a sadistic thirst with your existence. I'm sure you've seen it happen. Something is different. Someone is different. Their desires, needs, their reality forces them to be ostracized by the world at large. They're left alone. Probably not friendless, but sidelined, starving for attention, starved for connection. And that's when someone swoops in, promising greatness, but only offering that connection you crave through consumption of you, destruction of your world, perversion of your reality. You fight back, try to tell someone of your plight, but others respond, Oh, that can't be happening. That's not real. You must be mistaken. You are alone in your anomaly and left to suffer. We can't let that happen. Yes, go ahead, point out that we're isolating you as well, slowly consuming you and your existence just as surely as some abuser might wish to burn you up. Call us monsters, it's okay. But keep in mind that even in our pursuit of you, our cover-up, our incarceration of you, we still want to make sure that you continue to exist, that you aren't removed entirely through the world, that you aren't removed entirely from this world. You have every right to exist, and you have every right to be as different as you are. You, the monsters out there, the monsters in here, you are all just as real as we are, just as real as a teeming, irrational, self-destructive humanity that remains ignorant to your plight. And the conclusion that we are all, in the end, the same stuff, I hope you can find some comfort in it. Yes, you are a monster, but whether we are deemed anomalous or not, so is every last one of us, and that means we deserve your existence. We secure you, we contain you, we protect you, and even if you still don't get why I'm doing this, please understand that I still love you. 05-5 Thank you for listening to another reading. Now I'm gonna go off topic, a little off topic here and explain what has been going on the past few weeks, I guess. So basically, as most other podcasters, I kind of record early, like way in advance of when the episode is going to be released, and then I just schedule it in my hosting and everything. However, after the last episode that was released, I kind of took a small break. Um, I got really busy. As some of you know, I'm in school. So then we would have spring break around this time, but of course because of the coronavirus, our March break has sort of been extended an extra two weeks so far, um, with all the updates and everything that's been going on, it's probably going to be longer. But in the meantime, after our usual March break of two weeks ends, we're going to be having a few online classes. So obviously that means I can have more time to devote to recording these and putting them out. So I hope you guys enjoy more of these readings and I think after I'm done with most of SCP-001, I'm gonna move on and kind of read whatever I like, to be honest. I really want to read some of the new stories from the series 6, because not many people have done those yet. So you can support me through Patreon, I release new ad-free early bonus episodes there, everything like that. But if not, you can rate and review on your favorite podcast app, and also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I will see you in the next one.